Hey everyone, uh, thanks very much for coming to my presentation. Um, my name is Ben and uh, I work at Sukuri. Um, and I think that um, I really like this year's uh, theme for WordCamp Portland, which is how uh, the 20% of us can affect the 100% of us. Um, and I think security works really, really well with this theme um, because Word, uh, WordPress is, uh, you know, it's a collaborative. Can't hear me? Is that better? Here, yeah, okay. I'll hold it up like this. How, is that better? All right, cool. Um, so I think security works really well with this year's theme um, because. You know, WordPress is a is a collaborative project. We all learn from each other. We all collaborate. We communicate. We share. And uh, it, to some extent, uh, security for WordPress really comes down to each and every one of us. Um, because you know, the twenty percent of us can have a really positive impact on on the one hundred percent, right? But the things that affect WordPress, like security, uh, are proportional to that too. So I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about that today. So. Uh, if you don't know us already, uh, we're a globally distributed website security team. Uh, we clean and protect websites with uh, a website antivirus and firewall. And uh, we don't work just with WordPress. We work primarily with WordPress. Uh, but, you know, we do Joomla sites, Magento sites, whatever. If it's infected, we'll clean it. Um, but we do a lot of WordPress sites. Um, and just a quick note on who I am. Uh, I'm from Victoria, BC, Canada. I'm a tier one team lead. Whoops at uh, at Sukuri, and I've been at the company for about two years or so, and uh, it's a really great place to work. Uh, so without further ado, why security matters? Um, security matters because all websites get attacked. Um, as a quick example, I was speaking with a guy a couple months ago who I know, and he was telling me about this uh, martial arts center that he has in downtown Victoria. And he said, hey, I made a WordPress site with it for it, and we're all, it's all done, it's up online, you should check it out. And I was like, cool, all right. So I look at it, and it's a really nice site. It's got good theme, good content. Um, and he put a lot of work into it. It was really nice. And so I got a little bit curious, and I just decided to scan his site with our Sukuri Site Check tool, which is a free uh, malware scanner that you can scan your site for any issues. And sure enough, Buddy's website was infected uh, with some malicious code. And so he comes to me later on in the day, and he's like, hey, what did you think about my website? And I said, well, the site was great, but there's one little problem with it, and it's actually, it's infected. Um, so he was like, what? What do you mean it's infected? What do I do? Ah, how did this happen? And I said, don't worry, buddy. I got your back. You're talking to the right guy. <laughs> so <laughs> I went ahead, and, and I got it cleaned up for him, and he was really appreciative. Um, but what I felt was really interesting about that case was that he didn't actually know that his site was infected. He had no idea. And it really goes to show that without some proper monitoring and education and awareness about security issues, you know, things can go unnoticed and undetected for a long time. Uh, I have some clients that ask me um, when they realize they've been hacked, they, they think, who did this? How did this happen? When did this happen? How did they hack me? And these are sometimes really difficult questions to answer. But sometimes I'll take a look and I'm like, man, your site was hacked like two years ago. And it's been, it's been used uh, maliciously ever since. And, you know, they just didn't, they didn't really know. Um, so as a website owner, um, you have a responsibility to uh, keep tabs on your website security. Um, because, you know, these are all sites. We build our own sites. Um, and we have to maintain them and be good stewards, right? Um, and I have to say, uh, the media in, in general does a really poor job of conveying how security issues work, right? Um, it's always some guy wearing a balaclava in a dark room somewhere wanting to hack you and your family because they hate freedom. Uh, and <laughs> it's, it's not really like that, right? These attacks are automated, opportunistic. It's not that somebody wants to attack your site specifically. It's just that because your site is online, it is a target that, that can be attacked, uh, that will be attacked and can be compromised for, for malicious ends. Um, so with a little bit of education and awareness, uh, we can turn that sort of scary boogeyman, freedom-hating hacker into you know, a risk that, that you can manage, right? So security is complicated and scary. But really, the, the, the principles are quite simple. So this, uh, you want to avoid that. Uh, that's what it looks like when your site is, is infected. So 
the most important thing with uh, with security is is developing good security posture, right? And and what does that mean? Um, it's it's about the attitude more than anything. Uh, security isn't just a service that you purchase or a plugin that you use. You know, those are tools uh, at your disposal to help you, but. I work with a lot of clients who, you know, they have four or five security plugins. They have this security service. They've got that security service and they still get hacked and it drives them crazy. And they think, why? I have all this security stuff. Why do I keep getting hacked? And in these cases, I'm like, okay, well, that's a pretty good question. And I look in there and I take a quick look and I'm like, wait a second, th th this, this password is the same as last time, it's still password one, two, three. You know, you need to change this. You know, you can have all the best security stuff in the world and it always comes down to the weakest link, right? You know, let's take a really basic example. Say you have, you know, a moat, right? With alligators in it and you're really proud of your moat and you spent a lot of money on it and it keeps the bad guys out. But one night you leave the drawbridge down and a group of marauding raiders comes in and burns your castle to the ground, you know? What was the point of spending all that money on a moat, you know, if you're just going to leave your drawbridge down or leave your password as password123, right? Um, so really at the end of the day, security is an attitude. It's a way of approaching a set of problems. It's critical thinking and a little bit of healthy paranoia, which is a good thing in this, in this business, right? <coughs> so this quote, oh, also, there are no s silver bullet security solutions. There's no... 100% secure system. If anyone tells you anything else, you know, they're, they don't know what they're talking about. So, now, this quote, I think, really encapsulates everything I'm trying to say. This is from the Security Plus uh, CompTIA training textbook. And basically, it says, uh, spend more time preventing problems and less time fixing issues that result from a compromise, right? Malware is very costly to the global economy. It's really difficult to quantify, but some estimates put it at hundreds of billions of dollars, right? Just in uh, the time spent reformatting servers, preventing malware, removing malware, preventing spam, removing spam, wanting to punch your computer because spam. Um, you know, this it's, it's very costly. And a lot of these issues can be prevented from the beginning just through a little bit of good posture, good education, good awareness because most of the time when uh, I work with clients, nobody sees it coming, right? They never expect it, them, their website to get compromised and they always kind of bank on the fact that, oh, it's probably not going to happen to me, whatever, I'll be okay. And then something bad happens and then we're reacting to it, right? People are uh, in, tend to be very reactionary when it comes to these things. You know, everyone in this room has probably deleted an, imp a, a, an important file on their computer without having a backup, right? We all have done that. Um, and you don't think to make a backup before you lose something, you know? So um, it's better to take care of security issues before they happen. Um, so it, uh, this, I have to mention this, there's a common myth that you have to go to sketchy parts of the internet to find malware, right? Bob got a virus on his computer. He must have been going to some website he shouldn't have been going to. We all know what that means, right? But while that might be the case for Bob, let's give him the benefit of the doubt at least this one time, right? You know, you can, uh, legitimate websites are used to distribute malware all the time, all right? So, because they, they all get attacked. So the thing about WordPress specifically being 20% of the internet um, is that it's a very common target for attackers. Um, in the same way that Windows and Android are big targets for uh, malware because they're the most common uh, end user uh, operating systems, WordPress is targeted uh, a lot because it's the most common CMS. It's nothing to do with any inherent qualities of WordPress. WordPress for the most part is, is very secure. Um, but from a hacker's perspective, if you can find an exploit that works with WordPress or one of the popular plugins or themes, you've got yourself a big opportunity, right? So <coughs> also vulnerable plugins and themes are, are, are a really big problem with uh, WordPress, but I'll go into that a little bit more, uh, more later. So you're probably wondering at this point, 
why would someone want to hack my site, right? I just have a, a cool little blog somewhere. I don't get a lot of traffic. You know, why, why am I a target, right? Um, we all hear um, stories about companies like uh, Sony Pictures and, and Target and Home Depot getting hacked, right? <laughs> but these are, these are attacks that are targeted by skilled individuals. They're high-risk sort of operations. But think of it this way. If you can hack 1,000 smaller websites, well, that's an awful lot like hacking one site that's 1,000 times as big, right? And depending on what their goals are, um, that might actually uh, be better for them. Um, so the, the thing, though, that, that doesn't necessarily answer the question, why? Why, do you, why does someone want to hack me? And it's the same thing that motivates a lot of bad behavior, and, and that's money. People, this is their job. That's how they make a living, is by hacking websites. Um, again, how? How do you make money from hacking WordPress sites, or any website for that matter? There's a few different ways that this can happen. Um, a couple of examples. Uh, phishing attempts. Um, they will put a fake you know, Bank of America login page on your um, on your website somewhere buried in WP includes or WP content slash uploads or somewhere where you wouldn't actually really, really look. Um, and they will send out some emails saying, oh, hey, there's been some suspicious activity on your, on your account. Please verify some details here. And then they make off with as many banking credentials as they, as they can and, uh, you know, steal from people, right? Um, malicious redirects is another one. Um, People usually have the good sense not to go to some sketchy site.su because, you know, usually you just want to go to a site like mycoolblog.com or something like that. Um, so what do they do? Well, they redirect your traffic from mycoolblog.com to some sketchy site.su and deliver their malicious payload. So uh, they will redirect traffic. Or uh, drive-by downloads is another one. You'll go to mycoolblog.com and it says, mycoolblog.com wants you to update your Adobe Flash Player. And you're like, oh man, I'm sure I just updated that, but well, okay, I trust mycoolblog.com, so click, and then they'll deliver a banking Trojan or something like that on, on your computer. So in this case, that trust that your visitors have in your website is the vulnerability, one of the vulnerabilities they're exploiting, right? Um, and also, Black Hat SEO, super annoying. Uh, this is where they will fill your database with thousands of uh, malicious or spammy links, like cheap Viagra, cheap Cialis, cheap Louis Vuitton handbags, cheap Oakley sunglasses, cheap Ray-Ban sunglasses, cheap this, cheap that, cheap NFL jerseys, cheap aquaponics, just anything, right? And these are really annoying of infections to clean, super time consuming, and uh, it's really bad for your site's SEO because all of a sudden your domain is associated with all this spam, right? Um, and also, um, defacements is something that, uh, that not motivated by money, but uh, this is where, like this picture right here is where I took it from, this freedom-hating hacker trying to hack your family right here. Um, you know, that's where they just kind of want to, they're bored and they hack a bunch of sites and uh, put their graffiti up there just, I don't know, for attention or whatever. So it's not always motivated by money, but by and large it, it usually is. Um, so security needs to be uh, a priority from day one, right? We all want our sites to look nice, we want them to function well, to be fast, to have good content, um, but we need to add security to that list. If we want to, if you want to continue to, uh, for your website visitors to trust you, to keep coming back, to have a good positive experience with your site, um, it's best to just keep in mind that security is, a, is going to continue to be an ongoing issue. Um, and you're responsible for your site. This is your space. Um, it's, you have to be a good steward of it, right? So every time you log in to, say, update a new post, up, upload a couple images, whatever, um, you know, just check your security plugin. See if it's mentioning anything. See if it's setting off any alarms or, you know, the more familiar you are with your site environment, uh, by and large, the better equipped you're going to be 
to um, dealing with an issue if it if it happens, right? And I'm not saying that you have to spend you know hours and hours or a tremendous amount of time parsing through logs and looking for you know vulnerabilities or whatever. I just mean like be be aware of it, have it have it on your checklist. All right. So poor security posture. What are a couple examples of that? Um, the number one thing. Uh, that I see the biggest problem with WordPress sites is people not updating their websites. Um, you know, they get everything working, they get their plugins installed, their theme running, and they're like, okay, it's working, don't touch it ever, otherwise it might break, <laughs> right? And so I log into some um, environments and they have, you know, 16, 20 out of date plugins, and these are all potential big vulnerabilities that, that could cause their site to get hacked, right? So the uh, the the attitude of you know putting off updates or procrastinating on them or not wanting to do them you know that is the single biggest problem and the single biggest reason why sites get hacked uh, so you know all those out of date plugins sitting in your wp admin page hackers love those so another one is uh using pirated software um there are plenty of premium plugins and themes online that you can purchase uh, to add to your WordPress site. Some people will hack those plugins and put them up online for free. And you say, hey, well, great, I just saved myself 60 bucks. And now you put it on your site and now it's part of a botnet or something like that, right? So um, it's also kind of a crappy thing to do to the developers of these premium uh, plugins and, and themes because that's how they, they make a living, right? So another big problem I see is uh, lumping multiple websites into the same hosting environment. Um, this is a massive problem because <coughs> if you have you know one uh, hacked WordPress site to clean, that can be a bit of a pain and you know it's a moderately annoying cleanup job. But if you have ten or fifteen websites or subdomains all you know lumped into the same hosting account, um, if one gets hacked, it's very likely that all the others are going to get hacked too. And you've now gone from a, a moderately annoying cleanup job to a really big problem on your hands. Um, so if we're talking about secure hosting environments and arrangements, you want web one website, one FTP account, one password. That's it. No exceptions. Um, that way, if one of them gets hacked, it's not going to spread elsewhere, right? Um, and also, just relying on the, the assumption that you're not going to be hacked because, oh, that's, this is the kind of stuff that happens to other people, not me, and, you know, I'll probably be fine. And it's just not a very good attitude to have towards this kind of stuff, right? So this is what you really want to avoid seeing. This Google warning page is, uh, you know, not only is it, it it's scary for your visitors, um, it makes them maybe not want to come back to your website because it, it can really undermine the trust that your visitors have in your site, right? Uh, so this is what, what you want to avoid. So you have a, a responsibility as a site owner to protect uh, yourself, your visitors, and most of all, all the hard work that you've put into your, your website. You know, this, this can undermine all of that. Um, so, plugins are something I want to talk about specifically, right? Um, like I mentioned, out of date and vulnerable software is the leading cause of website infection. So, by and large, have as few plugins as you need, just the minimum amount. I see some people have, you know, four security plugins, three SEO plugins, two caching plugins, and they're all kind of doing the same but different things. Um, but really, when I mentioned earlier on the wee bit of healthy paranoia, you know, you want to treat every piece of software that you introduce into your site environment as a potential vulnerability. Um, so the fewer plugins that you have, the better. This is called, in security jargon, this is called decreasing the attack surface, all right? So update your plugins, only have the minimum amount that you need, um, and, uh, you know, just be, be wary of that. And also, the fewer plugins that you have, the faster your site's going to perform, by and large. Passwords is another one, right? Um, this is another leading cause of infection. So compromise passwords. How does that happen? Um, the most common one, of course, is uh, brute force attacks. Uh, you know, uh, the bad guys will write uh, scripted bots that 
sequentially try every username and password thinkable on your WP admin page. First, they'll try username admin password pass123. If that doesn't work, they'll try username admin password change me123, which is actually one of the most common passwords. I'm not kidding. Um, so, how else? Um, maybe. Uh, you are working on your WordPress site at some cafe or something, you, you're connected by FTP, which is an unencrypted protocol, and maybe there's a hacker, you know, sniffing the wireless traffic at, at the cafe and, you know, snags your credentials. Maybe not likely, but totally possible, right? Or maybe you could just write your password on a post-it note and put it on your computer and walk away from it. Um, that, you know, can happen too. So, by and large, uh, have one password for one site, don't reuse them, and the general rule is if your password is really annoying to remember and type, it'll be way harder for someone to guess it, right? So I want to talk a little bit about backups too. Backups is one of the most overlooked um, parts of security. I, I have to ask clients for backups sometimes because the malware has damaged their site beyond repair and there's not really anything I can do to fix it. Um, so I say, do you have a backup? And they say, oh no, I never, I never thought to make one, right? Again, you don't think about these things until after the fact. Um, so if you have a really good backup strategy, if you uh, are comfortable with uh, restoring your site or say if you have a hosting provider that, that is willing to do that for you, that will go a long way. It can save you a tremendous amount of headache. Um, have a good backup strategy, do them frequently, and uh, you know, have, it's, it's, like a, it's like a spare tire you know, when you're stuck on the side of the road. <coughs> so there's some other practical steps that you can take to improve your website security. And I can't stop saying this, update, update, update. This is crucial. Um, don't keep old software on your server. Um, like if you have a, a backup, say, you don't want to keep that on your server because that's a whole bunch of old plugins that's never going to get updated ever again. Um, I would also highly recommend using a, a security plugin. Like uh, we, we have one um, for free on that you can download from WordPress.org. There's also ones like uh, WordFence and, uh, and iThemes, which I'd recommend too. Um, uh, don't, you know, install every security plugin under the sun. These aren't silver bullets, you know, they're, they're your friends, they're tools that can help you um, to improve your security posture and the security of, security of your site. They can do things like seeing who's logging in from where, if any files have been modified recently, um, if there's any malicious strings in any of your code. Um, and also a firewall is a really good option to put your site um, behind, especially if your site is making money for you and is part of your business. This is really important because this will help prevent attacks from occurring even before they compromise your site. Um, there are paid and free options. The free ones you kind of have to put a little bit of extra work into to configure, um, but by and large this is one of the best things to do to prevent hacks. Um, so what are some other things that you can do? Uh, there are some, basically, uh, there are some things that you can do to your WP config file, like disallow file edit, some extra options that you can put in there uh, to make your site more secure. Sometimes they make it a little bit more annoying and inconvenient to administer your site because unfortunately security and convenience don't always get along, right? Um, but you can still look at some options of things that you can do and there's information in the, in, at WordPress.org on, on how you can do that. Also, exercising least privilege, some more security jargon there, I'm sorry, but um, basically what that means is don't give anyone administrative access to your site unless they absolutely need it. And then when they're done, revoke that access. Um, some web WordPress websites are worked on by multiple people from different locations. They're collaborative projects and, and that's great. But if you have 12 administrative users for your website, that's 12 vulnerabilities, right? If any one of their websites gets compromised, or any of one of their computers gets compromised, then that can be used to infect your site, right? So also just a little easy thing like making sure your file permissions on your server are set correctly. Uh, 644 for files and 755 for directories are, are the default. A lot of people set them to 777 because it makes it easy to work with, but that is a catastrophe waiting to happen. Don't do that. Also, 
Um, our plugin will notify people of brute force attempts, right? And uh, I often get asked the question, like, how do I keep them out of WP Admin? How do I stop these brute force attacks from happening? Um, well, there's a few ways you can do that. Number one, don't use the admin name admin. Uh, that's the one that's always tried by the bad guys. Um, and also, if your website is, say, mycoolblog.com, don't make your administrator name mycoolblog. It's kind of easy to guess. Um, so uh, that w basically, that won't prevent the brute force attacks from happening, but it will make them ineffective, effectively. Also, you could use a, uh, a CAPTCHA on your WP admin page because uh, most of these attacks are automated, as I mentioned, so you can filter out a lot of this bot traffic and all of these, these automated, automated attacks by, by doing that. You can also uh, restrict access to your WP admin page by IP address, uh, and like this image shows right here, just allow those four and blocks everything else. It's not, you know, bulletproof, not foolproof, but uh, that's probably one of the, the best things that you can do to prevent these attacks. And also, um, if you have a couple of, uh, if you do employ some solutions to prevent these brute force attacks, don't assume that you're safe. You know, s you still want to monitor who's logging in and keep a, keep a good eye on things, right? So, here's a uh, here's a picture of our uh, plugin here and some things it can do. Um, definitely not the only security plugin available, but it's one that you can use to uh, to help monitor your site environment. All right. So, what happens if you do get hacked? Because um, that's something to consider too. And if you have a, a game plan ahead of time, uh, you're going to be a lot better off uh, uh, to deal with it when it, if and when it does happen. And this is when you really appreciate being proactive. Like, oh, thank God I made that backup last night. Now I can restore and you know problem solve. No, no worries. And that that's great, right? So, basically, the best thing to do is don't panic. Uh, every problem has a solution, right? And uh, the WordPress community is really great. There are a lot of people that are available to help you, that want to help you, that have uh, good tools and knowledge available there. Um, so, you know, don't panic. And also, it's not a bad idea to disclose to your visitors. Um, I see a lot of blogs uh, that I clean, and their, uh, their most recent post is something like, Hey everyone, just so you know, uh, I got hacked, uh, but don't worry, I'm fixing the issue, I'm getting everything sorted out, um, and uh, you know, just to be on the safe side, maybe scan your computer with an antivirus program, it's probably a good idea. And maybe some of your visitors haven't done that in like a year, so that might actually work out pretty well. So, you know, I, I hear sometimes, uh, malware is such a pervasive problem that affects so many websites. And uh, I hear of some uh, developers and website owners that they just, they give up. They say, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm spending more time fixing my sites that got broken or hacked and keeping the hackers out than actually making blog posts or actually working on sites. You know, it becomes overwhelming for them. And it, they just give up. And it really, it, it breaks my heart when I hear that. You know, these people, they just want to have a site and they just want to be part of the community and contribute and collaborate and they don't, they, nobody wants to deal with this stuff, right? Um, and, and that's my favorite part of my job is being able to help people out of this situation and, and give them some peace of mind and so they can, you know, they can just work on their sites like they want to and they don't have to worry so much about all this stuff. And I really, I really love that about my job. Um, so, I hope that you, uh, you know, take something from my talk and, and that put security on your radar and make sure that it's something that you're, that you're wary of um, and that can save you a, a massive amount of headache going forward. Um, now, it's also worth mentioning, uh, I'm saying, oh, there could be malware lurking around every corner, uh, any WordPress site can be infected, beware, beware. Uh, well, I kind of don't want to go on the internet anymore. Uh, that's kind of scary. Um, that's not really. I don't. I don't want you to be too paranoid that you just, you know, cut the cable and never go online again, right? Um, but there's a few things that you can do to improve your security online, and this doesn't have to do with your WordPress site specifically. But I think it's worth mentioning. Um, 
Use an antivirus, of course. Even if you have a Mac, even if you use Linux, you know, have some sort of monitoring tool on your operating system to see if something is, is amiss. Um, my, uh, also, having good uh, responsible browsing habits is a really good thing. Don't click on any suspicious weird links that people email you to you. Uh, I mean, most of you probably know that already, but it's kind of worth mentioning. Most of, more than anything though, I would recommend everyone use a script blocker in their browser. Um, this is an indispensable tool uh, as someone in my job who works with malicious sites all day. Um, and it can, you can visit a malicious site and it won't be able to deliver its payload. Um, script, script blockers make it kind of inconvenient and annoying to browse the internet, but I would re still recommend everyone go with one. Um, my buddy at Malwarebytes uh, actually wrote a really good uh, blog article on the Malwarebytes blog about how to secure your browser, uh, and I would recommend everyone go through that and read it because it's very informative and very helpful. Um, so, uh, like I said, web browser security can make it kind of inconvenient to browse the internet, but um, you know, it's malware is is common enough that I would recommend that uh, that everyone do it. So. That is, uh, that's it, um, and I hope that you learned something about security. <laughs> so, uh, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. You mentioned firewalls and as a service. How would you compare those to kind of like the CDN type things, like Cloudflare and stuff, which is supposed to offer security? Could you repeat the question? Yeah. Um, so, uh, how does a, a firewall compare to a CDN? Um, to Cloudflare. Cloudflare. Well, they're they're kind of the same thing. Um, CDN is mostly for uh, content delivery, caching, and speed and stuff like that, right? But since um, your site is going through another server as a kind of proxy, um, that's an opportunity to filter out malicious traffic. Um, and that's exactly what our firewall does and what the professional version of Cloudflare does. Like, I think the the caching system can help prevent DDoS problems on the site and that sort of thing. Um, but I think, you know, the professional version of Cloudflare <coughs> has, uh, has some security options in it as well. Um, so they're kind of the same thing, kind of not really, depending on, on the service. But if you do have a, a firewall where your website traffic is getting routed through another server, there's going to be some caching system in there. Yes? Yeah. The password system, yeah, like LastPass and password management tools in your browser. Yeah, I would I would strongly recommend uh, using one uh, because there's really just no way to remember all of these complex passwords and reusing passwords is a is a bad thing, right? It's it's not a secure uh, solution, but you also have to remember a couple months ago LastPass was hacked. Right? And, and uh, so that's kind of like a single point of failure where you have all your, your passwords in one place. Well, that's all of a sudden a really big target for the bad guys, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and that's, that's definitely good, but it's, again, it's not a silver bullet solution, right? The fact that all your passwords are sitting in one place is kind of a, it's a big target. So um, I would still recommend using one, but. Um, you know, I would definitely uh, follow security news, and you know, if if uh, if any password management system gets hacked, they're going to disclose and tell people to update. But it's a good thing to keep on that, for sure. Um, you in the back, I think you had your hand up first. All right. So, how do you how do you change the permissions on file permissions on your server? You'd have to connect uh, using a program like uh, FileZilla uh, to your server by FTP, um, or uh, if you uh, your hosting account can sometimes have uh, a file managing sort of window, and uh, it will tell you what your your permissions are set as. It's kind of its own little system, um, but basically, uh, yeah, seven 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 means everything is publicly writable, right? Um, 
So it, it will allow, if anyone um, wants, they can send a request or post request to your site and, and modify things. Um, so basically 644-755 for file and directory permissions just makes it so only uh, allowed users, FTP users, can make modifications. Um, it's kind of its own, it's, it's, it's too much to explain right now. <laughs> Oh yeah, sure. There's pro there's an article in the Codex in WordPress that explains everything. Oh wow, lots of questions. Uh, ben, you talked about security cleans up af after an attack like that. So what is what is a reasonable cost for something like you to do such a thing? Uh, well, there's uh, I, we would charge uh, $200 for a year subscription, and then we'll just do unlimited cleanups. Doesn't matter how many times your site gets infected, and we'll put it behind a firewall. But other services do it too. You know, uh, some hosting providers just do a one-time cleanup for like 60 bucks or something. Okay. You know, and so there's different options Rather available. Than thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, oh yeah, no, it shouldn't cost that amount of money. Okay. Um, it's usually pretty reasonable. Good. Thank yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it just prevents scripting from working on the site at all. Oh, sorry, of course, repeating the question. Uh, for uh, no script and script lockers, um, it just prevents scripting from working at all. So basically, it, it breaks a lot of sites too. So you're like, oh, the images aren't loading. Oh, the video is not loading. Oh, refresh, refresh, refresh. So it can make it kind of difficult to, to use and kind of inconvenient. Um, but it just prevents the payloads from working and, and active scripting from functioning at all. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, yeah. Can you, uh, ben, can you talk about the benefits of a security certificate and SSL cert just in regard to security as opposed to just using it for commerce? SSL. Um, SSL does not secure your site. It will not prevent hackers from accessing it. Um, what it does is it encrypts the traffic on your site. So if you uh, have like an e-commerce site or a social networking site where there's things that you need to be encrypted and the communications to be encrypted, um, <coughs> it will make sure that the traffic can't be sniffed. But it's not going to prevent hacks. I would still recommend having one, um, but it's not crucial. You know, you don't, uh, depending on what kind of site you have, you may or may not need one. And it's, it's not going to prevent attackers. Uh, Who is next? Anyone? Yeah. Right, not having multiple sites in one hosting account. Um, this goes into uh, file permissions uh, as well a little bit. When you have uh, one hosting account, you, you have one FTP user. And your site, your site files are owned by that FTP user. All of the files owned by the same FTP user can are writable by to the other ones, right? And so, if one site gets hacked and it's owned by in the same account, it can write to the other ones. So, what you can do is you can uh, most hosting accounts have the option to make multiple FTP users, and you can reassign um, each site to a separate one. So, you know, even if they exist in the same hosting account in the same space, they can't write to each other. So they'll get a permission denied error if they try to infect one of the other sites. Yeah. Yes. Minute and a half. Okay. Okay. Not not too much time left. But what was your question? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, putting an HD access file in, in your directories to, to prevent um, unauthorized kinds of files from working in it. Yeah, that's one of the things we do when we, when we clean up a site. Like we'll put a HD access file in all the images directories to prevent PHP from executing from in there. Um, it can't prevent hacks necessarily, but it can hinder them. It can make it more difficult and inconvenient for the, for the bad guys to execute their payloads and it makes it, you know, it's, it's definitely no silver bullet, right? Uh, but I would say it's worth it. Yeah, it's, it's a good measure to take for sure. All right, I think we got time for maybe one, one more. Yeah, I have a question in terms of like, you know, the presence of these kind of WordPress and there's still issues with the team. Yeah. How 
So if you're stuck with an old theme and you can't update WordPress, well, and that, that's, that's really tricky. Um, I would, I mean, the best thing to do would be to find a replacement theme. Um, but if you are completely unable to update your site for some reason, um, I would put your site behind a firewall and that would prevent, um, that would sort of patch the, uh, the vulnerabilities that are inherent in, in the old software that you're using. And then you wouldn't have to worry about it so much. All right, so um, if any, yeah, I'll be hanging around. If for all of you who have questions that I wasn't able to get to, please come talk to me. I'm happy to help. And uh, you can hang out at the happiness bar. yeah, I can hang out at the happiness bar too. Uh, and I have business cards. If anyone wants my contact info, please take it and uh, get in touch with me if you have any questions. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Ben. Thank you.